Welcome back to Trading Hour. We are putting the spotlight on a new set of regulations that the uh, RBI is looking at. Uh, the RBI has released a draft circular outlining a comprehensive review and harmonization of regulations that are applicable to housing finance companies at, and NBFCs. Essentially, what RBI is saying is that when it comes to gathering public deposits, the rules for housing finance companies should be tightened to bring them at par with NBFC. So let's uh, straight away go to Abhishek first to understand what are the changes uh, and the tightening that RBI is proposing. Abhishek. Uh, well, uh, you know, it's just the regulation for housing finance companies and not NBFCs. It is towards NBFCs is what many analysts have written. Uh, so RBI has issued draft uh, circular to align norms of HFCs uh, with that that they have given out for NBFCs. So proposed changes include uh, maintain 15% of deposits in liquid assets. Currently, the norm is about 13% and uh, deposits can be 1.5 times your net owned uh, you know, uh, fund. Currently, it's at 3x, so they are reducing that by half. Uh, deposits maturity is now being capped to 60 months of five years. Earlier, the uh, duration was about 120 months or 10 years. And they must obtain investment grade rating every year, uh, which is now uh, becoming a, a periodical in nature. Uh, they should have board approval for investment in unquoted shares of any other company which is not their subsidiary. And value of investment in AIF in in excess of 10% of owned funds shall be reduced from computation of the net owned funds. So, for example, IFL uh, Home Lo uh, Finance have about uh, 160 crore of exposure in AIF. Uh, they have already made uh, disclosures, uh, which means that uh, you know 116 basis point impact uh, from RBI ruling is what they are anticipating. Back to you. Thank you very much uh, for putting out the proposed changes. Viral Shah from IFL Securities is now with us on the show. Uh, the impacted companies are only the housing finance companies, so not all NBFC, so PNB, Canfin Homes, uh, IFL Home Finance, as Abhishek was uh, pointing out, Viral. Uh, which, according to you, to your mind, are the most impacted and on account of which provision or which regulation? Sure. Uh, so basically, uh, there are five major uh, changes that are uh, proposed in terms of harmonizing yeah. the regulations. Uh, of that, the primary one being uh, the enhanced uh, investments in uh, the liquid investments is something that is uh, all of the HFCs are in compliance with. Uh, the key uh, to my mind are uh, three uh, major changes. One is uh, the capping of the public deposits at 1.5 times the net owned funds. Uh, this is a, a halving of the limit from 3x. Now, these norms were already applicable for NBFCs. Uh, with regards to the HFCs, uh, there are a few HFCs uh, like uh, the likes of PNB Housing, Sundaram Housing, uh, who have uh, this uh, public deposits at 1.1 times of their net owned funds. Uh, yes, it is lower than uh, 1.5 times cap, uh, but what this has a more of a longer term implication uh, because uh, now your uh, public deposits are linked to the book value compounding which is there. Uh, for most of these names, it's anywhere between uh, 13 to 15 percent, whereas the loan growth is uh, much higher than that. So essentially, you will have to incrementally fund your loan growth through the other sources of funding and your mm -hmm. ability to fund it through public deposit reduces. So, uh, second, Viral, yeah. Viral, Viral, just one second. On this point, hi, Surabhi here, just on this point, uh, it's very clear yes, that uh, RBI wants to uh, sort of reduce risk in the system. And I think the last couple of steps that we've seen from the, the central bank proposals, circulars, are, you know, in that direction. Likewise, this one. So while you're saying that some of the the, the housing finance companies you named, they're below the 1.5% threshold. Right now in the listed universe, is anyone above 1.5%? Uh, oh, uh, no, uh, where the deposits are above 1.5 times. None of them are there. In fact, even in the unlisted space, uh, so we have looked at all the uh, prominent HFCs. None of them have uh, public deposits more than one and a half times. Okay, so then to come to your point, so, uh, I mean, nothing materially changes immediately. They don't have to rush to, you know, alter their, uh, you know, deposit structure. But as you are saying, the headroom for growth, how do you fund future loan growth? It can't be overly reliant on deposits. Do you see that having as any sort of a medium term impact on, uh, uh, you know, margins and just, you know, the source of funding and the cost of funding? 
so uh, again i don't think uh, there will be a material impact because in terms of especially the margins because typically public deposits are the more costier source of funding vis a vis the wholesale funding the reason why hfcs or nbfcs uh, want a public deposit is that it gives you the granularity of the liability uh, franchise which otherwise is not uh, available to many of these nbfcs okay fair enough we have uh, you know just to complete that point viral you said so this was one of the important regulations but you said there is another important regulation which can impact hfcs so tell us about the yes. other one which you, yeah the other one is uh, basically in terms of uh, capping the maximum tenure of your public deposits okay. uh, earlier hfcs could uh, raise a public deposit having a maximum tenure of up to 10 years now that has been brought down to 5 years over mm -hmm. here uh, there are uh, i would like to highlight two nbfcs who have a uh, relevant portion of their public de uh, rather total deposits uh, having maturity of more than 5 years these are uh, the icici home finance and then uh, pnb housing they have 8 mm -hmm. to 13% of their uh, deposits having maturities of more than 5 uh, years what again this means is that you will have to borrow longer uh, in the non public deposit uh, side for you to uh, sustain your uh, liability duration which is required because essentially mm -hmm. you are funding your long duration housing finance loans through uh, the wholesale market some of this long tenure deposits used to give you that benefit okay. absolutely so is there any uh, financial impact as they make that switch then to make sure their liability duration is aligned or matched uh depends on what kind of your credit rating is uh, there what is the appetite of, for the longer tenure uh, wholesale funds that you would uh, want to raise to uh, supplement your liability duration it depends on uh, it's mm. a function of that all right uh, let's bring in deepak shnoy into the conversation as well deepak hi good to have you on so we were just understanding some of the granular aspects with viral over there what do you think uh, if not today but does this in any manner impact the flexibility that housing finance companies had with respect to mobilizing uh, a lot of public deposits i mean viral is telling us that technically even public deposits are actually more expensive you could you know go to the wholesale markets and perhaps uh, pick, pick up funds at a cheaper cost but what do you think uh, so so be i think uh, the regulation is essentially moving mbfcs out of public deposits i mean not to have that much reliance on public deposits instead use bonds Uh, the bond market and uh, direct financing from uh, 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 banks. Now, recently, banks have been told that if they uh, are exposed to an NBFC of any sort, that their uh, uh, risk weight on those loans uh, more nearly doubles. So, if it was twenty percent earlier, it's now forty five percent, and so on. So, there is uh, going to be a little bit of a, a pain trying to get uh, more loans from banks as well. but the bond market also has seen a lot of uh, um, uh, you know uh, issues with mutual funds and debt not being very attractive but in the bond market they can uh, they are flexible in tenure right so they can do a 10 year maturity bond they can do a 2 year maturity bond and so on so fixed deposits have the other problem that they can be called uh, any time uh, many of these things after a year or so they they do get called uh, and uh, uh, even longer term deposits can be called earlier by the depositor mm. so i think in bonds you can't have that so you actually have more more better structured alm if you go through the bond route so i think that is where rbi is trying to you know come in but it's more like harmonizing norms because they've said listen hfcs were earlier regulated by the national housing bank now it's the rbi that regulates it so we're going to make it common across every kind of uh, uh, um, nbfc hfc is just another form of an nbfc and therefore eventually what will happen is any nbfc can be a housing finance company uh there should be no reason why you have to specially create a housing finance company in it eventually i think that is where uh, we are going to go to because the rules will be common mm. uh deepak uh, this also some news about investment through alternate investment funds for the calculation on nof that's net own fund just explain what that is and what's the implication so it, this is an interesting piece and although deposit taking nbfcs are only very few and probably the effect on them is minimal the aif regulation is more complex uh, mm -hmm. a lot of home finance companies were financing developers and then transitioning those loans to aifs that they pretty much had 50 to 70 75% of holding in that means uh, <clears throat> they would create an they would create an aif uh, uh, and then own 50 
to 75% of that AIF itself. And then the AIF would then buy bonds of this, say, a real estate developer, and the loan would go off the books of the housing finance company. I'm not taking names here, but I think this has been a practice that has been uh, 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 that that has caught both SEBI and RBI, uh, RBI's eye, and SEBI first banned a certain structure last year, uh, which allowed banks to take the first hit in case those developers' loans default. They said, no, everybody has to be the same. Uh, in November or December this year, they changed the rules for banks uh, investing, and NBFC is investing in AIFs, uh, where they said, if you guys have a link, then uh, <clears throat> we're going to make you do 100% provision. What they've done now is told housing finance companies <clears throat> that they will uh, uh, basically have to reduce entirely from capital. That means if their capital is 100 crores and they've invested, say, 10 crores in an AIF, uh, that 10 crores is uh, removed completely from their capital and their capital assume, is assumed to be 90 crores. If that AIF is owned by them at 50% or more, that means they are a uh, majority beneficiary of the AIF. So this does hurt a few uh, relatively uh, uh, smaller players in the housing finance space, but players in the wholesale funding of developers, real estate developer space. So that's that's a complication. We'll have to see the impact of it. A uh, lot of these impacts are actually coming together, so we don't know which one will affect them more. But in the in the near term, do you see any impact on uh, uh, growth, Deepak? Growth or margins? Anything that one can guess right away? Margins should come down. I think uh, in general, you know, uh, having a deposit taking in a, a HFC uh, reduce. Uh, uh, you know, so there are very few. I think there's PNB housing, LIC housing, Canfin, uh, even Hutco. Uh, the, they will see a slight increase in uh, uh, what they have to own as government securities versus giving of home loans from 13% to 15%. Uh, uh, a change in uh, funding mix from uh, deposits to, um, uh, you know, the uh, bonds and perhaps direct bank loans, both of which could be a little tricky if all of them have to run to banks right now to get funded uh, in the future. Again, this is a draft regulation. It still may take time to come in, but when it does, uh, depending on the contours, I expect margins to reduce slightly. This is already a low margin space in general uh, because uh, housing loans are one of the cheapest loans in India. Uh, but the, we do we do see some impact on 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 company margins going forward. Uh, it may result in a small rise in interest rates for borrowers as well. Gentlemen, uh, thank you very much, uh, Viral and Deepak, for joining in and throwing light on this latest development for housing finance companies. Out of time on trading R. Uh, stay tuned. Halftime report is up next. <laughs>